Delirium is a Netflix new release horror flick produced by the Blumhouse B-Team. It's another boring addition to the Netflix arsenal of boring shit. Topher Grace, best known as the first Venom, plays Tom, a man fresh out of the nuthouse for his involvement in the murder of a girl when he was little. Tom is the heir to some other crazy guy, his rich father. His dad was an eccentric and his mother left them when they were young, leaving only bitterness in her wake. My mom leaving him, him running for office. You know, he was ashamed of me. But Pops just died from a heart attack, so Tom has a nice little mansion to fall back on. He has to report to the snarky cop Brody, for some reason played by Emmy Award winning actress Patricia Clarkson. You gotta be shitting me. Tom starts seeing weird shit in the mansion, including a Doberman and his dead, gnarly faced dad. He also gets obscene phone calls. Who is this? The mansion is positively creepy, with all the creaks and footsteps, and even a record player sounding in the background. Tom finds himself in need of groceries and supplies, so he has them delivered. Genesis Rodriguez plays Lynn, the cute delivery girl who is somehow immediately interested in Tom. How far are you? Shut up! You're not in this video! <laughs> she apparently also frequents his Wikipedia page and is also a psycho. I, I, I guess this is kind of awkward, but I heard about your dad passing away and... I just wanted to say I'm sorry. You don't have any family members that could move in and help you out? Nope. Indeed, Tom must possess some kind of animal magnetism, as even Brody wants to get him in the sack. She misinterprets a late night phone call from Tom as an impromptu booty call. He turns down her advances and she takes his meds away out of spite. <laughs> No, 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 I need my pills. I own you, bitch. Please, no, don't take my pills. Maybe when your demons start coming out of the woodwork, you won't play so hard to get. Later, Tom takes a dip in his indoor pool, but the cover starts closing by itself. He narrowly makes it out and goes to check the timer, only to find a severed tongue. Add that to the inheritance. Eventually, Tom hallucinates his incarcerated brother, Alex, in the house. In the house... <laughs> Or is Alex really there? The sibling dynamic is explored in depth, as both Tom and Alex were put away for murder of a girl that Tom had a crush on when they were young. That's a really long sentence. Just broke out of prison to come say hi. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. They let you out of the nut house a little early, huh? Alex plays mind games with Tom, and the movie wants you to wonder if Alex really escaped prison by faking his own fiery death. Or is just another haunting from within Tom's tortured mind? You get the sense that there's an epic plot twist ahead. Lynn comes over and tells Tom that she gets him and that they're crazy kindred spirits. She has to go potty, but Tom finds her on the floor with a cut on her head. He picks her up and carries her out of the bathroom when Brody walks in. Brody interprets this as a confirmation that Tom is indeed a psycho killer. This isn't what Put her down! No, 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 no. Put her down! But Alex intervenes, and proves he's a real boy after all, by stabbing her. I guess that settles it. I'm real. Alex reveals that he's after their dad's buried treasure located somewhere in the house. He goes to a secret basement to find their dad safe, and makes a chilling discovery! Their mom never left them, as she was being held captive by their insane dad in a secret room under the house! She's been stuck, and a leak from the pool has made her makeshift home somewhat amphibious. With the poor lighting and strange watery room, we thought she was some kind of creature from the Black Lagoon. This sort of shape of water twist would have been amazing and nonsensical, so we were left disappointed when it didn't happen. It seems Mom was also the one making the phone calls to Tom. We never could figure out why she could only grunt and not actually speak words. Also, why did she have a phone? Anyway, Alex shoots their mom and threatens to shoot Lynn if Tom doesn't open the safe. What did you do? Same as always, Tommy! What you wanted to, but couldn't! Tom does open the safe, revealing Pops' cash fortune. But there's a scuffle, and Mom puts her metal clasp on Alex's neck, and he drowns with her as the pool water floods in. As Alex and his mom perish in the water... Darkly sentimental music plays in the background, and nobody's buying it. 
Tom and Lynn get away, and finally the movie ends. Indeed, the movie does end, but it's only now that the epic twist, rivaled only by the usual suspects and the sixth sense, kicks in. The film sets up things like a secret crawl space and peephole, with no satisfactory payoff. It also introduces a parole check-in device, but does nothing creative with it at all. It's simply used as a device to get the police to the house at the end of the movie. Delirium tries to introduce numerous interesting elements, but it's too surface level and never focuses on one enough. It's only ever interesting when Alex enters the picture in the middle of the film, but that payoff is lackluster as well. Across the board, the characters suck. Even Lynn, who's just kind of crazy, and her motivations really make no sense at all. You might as well spill, because whatever you don't tell me, Wikipedia will anyway. We thought she could be a reporter with ulterior motives trying to find a story, but that was never happening in a crappy movie like this. Delirium is not incompetent enough to be scary bad, and definitely not interesting enough to be interesting. Its sin is its extreme mediocrity. <laughs> she misinterprets a na- <laughs> <laughs> To help blind me? I... Whatever. She misinterprets a late night call. Fuck! I can't- my... It's too much water in my eyes. I... <laughs> You should have just you, you should have just recorded the whole thing because it's like blinding me. Oh, just turn it down. I thought it was. She misinterprets a late night phone call from Tom as an impromptu. But fuck, I feel like I'm staring into the sun.